Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and creative homes. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Chelsea's adorable tiny home, which allows her to be near family when she's not traveling the world. And while she's off being a jet setter, the tiny home acts as a rental, helping her to afford her wanderlust lifestyle. That's why I love tiny homes so much, because I don't think you should have to work for your home. I think your home should work for you. Someone once told me that the world is this huge place and you get this much to make it beautiful and cozy for you. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time I publish a new video. But right now, let's take a tour. I'm Chelsea, you're on the nut farm, and I want to show you my tiny house, the Irish Gypsy. I became interested in tiny home living while I was working on private jets because I really love the gypsy life. Tiny spaces just feel amazing to me. My builder was Vintage Cottages in Salem, Oregon. Finding the right builder for me was really easy. I just put it in Google. We drove there, looked at it, talked about pricing, and then just bought it. Like, I hate research. <laughs> so I didn't want to look at too many places and it seemed really affordable. They do wholesale, so it's just kind of the shell and they put it where we wanted it. It was very easy. We're here on the nut farm in Oregon. We call it the nut farm because we have these two beautiful walnut trees, but also because my grandpa's kind of nutty. He lives right next to me. My brother, his wife, and two kids live right next to that. And then my tiny house is on my mom's property. Because we're all here, we get together for a lot of meals, pick blackberries together or peaches and can them and go on bike rides. Really just enjoy each other's company. I lived here for two and a half years, and I loved every minute of it. Before that, I had been traveling for six years away from my family. So when I came back, I was just loving having my community here. I think that was like one of the happiest times in my life, just seeing everything come together. After two and a half years of being settled, I felt the need to be a gypsy again and go back to traveling. So now I have a renter who is amazing. She's just the sweetest, she's a firefighter. She's gone a lot for her fire jobs in other states. So I feel like I'm pretty lucky in that way where it's not getting heavy use. I bought the tiny house for cash for 33,200. She pays 850 in rent. With that, the tiny house will be paid off in four and a half years. Even though I loved living here, it's also affording me to live the life that I want. Welcome to the outside of the Irish Gypsy. As you can see, it's a little taller. I added two feet to the height so that I could sit up in bed in the loft. It's also a little bit wider at nine and a half feet versus the eight feet that's typical, but I can still go down the road as long as I get flags for both of the corners. And then one of my favorite things that attracted me to the Irish Gypsy was these windows. They really said gypsy to me. And then I also included the porch, which was an add-on. They had all the pieces of wood and instructions, so my dad came over and built that for me. We got the house four years ago and it's all cedar. I've stained it once when we first got it and once about a week ago. I really like the colors. If it was up to me, I would have done really bright, fun colors, but since my family had to look at it the most, I decided to keep pretty neutral. <laughs> the skirting is just plywood and it doesn't have any insulation behind it. As soon as the trailer and tiny house got here, my dad took off the tires and put them underneath to protect them from the weather. And then he put this up to protect all of the pipes from the weather as well. So this box here is for the sewer. There's insulation in there to keep all of the pipes warm in the winter. And this goes to a pump, which then turns on when it needs to and pumps everything towards the street. 
All right, if you want to come with me, we can do a tour of the inside. Welcome to the inside of the Irish Gypsy. One of the first things you notice is there's a lot of wood in here. It makes it really warm and welcoming. Whenever I have new guests, they always comment that it doesn't feel tiny in here. You'll notice it feels pretty big for the high ceilings and how wide it is. The windows provide a lot of natural light. And then I think the colors that I chose add a really fun vibe. So the house arrived with this counter space here. They had me choose an oven, which I went for a smaller size because I'm not a big cooker, and a smaller fridge. I noticed it wasn't really enough counter space, so I had my dad build this for more space here and more storage space. Originally, the fridge was on this side, and I thought that that blocked it and kind of separated the two rooms, so I preferred the fridge over there to make it a little bit bigger. When it comes to the kitchen, I was really excited about saving space with things that hang here. I also got this, so that's not on the counter, and I purchased this for kind of a pantry for dry storage, and it's worked out really well. And on the other side of the kitchen is my tiny bathroom. I'm used to a pretty small bathroom because I've worked and lived on boats for a long time. I think it's really cute in there. I did get a shelf, so that helped a ton for space. I don't have a lot of toiletries. The shower is a little bit bigger than if you're showering in an RV, so I like that, but it's still pretty small for when you're bending over and trying to shave. If I could do one thing different, I might make the bathroom a little bit bigger, especially if there's more than one person. I really enjoyed the cedar in the bathroom, especially when you would shower and it would heat up. The cedar smelled really good for a long time. I just went for a regular toilet. I thought about doing composting, but it was so easy to hook up here, it really wasn't a problem. So now we get to talk about the closet, which is one of my favorite parts about my tiny house. As soon as I moved in, I had a friend from yachting come visit me and he used to build the interior of yachts. So I told him that I had a lot of clothes being in Oregon. There's a lot of different weather. So he had the idea to do this with the two separate racks so I can hang a lot. And then this is all hanging as well with some cupboards and drawers. At the bottom of the stairs, I have my hope chest that I got when I graduated high school and I knew I wanted it in here. I didn't know where to put it. So it ended up being my bottom step. Now it's being used for pillows and blankets. Let's head up to the loft. This is a queen size bed. As you can see, I can't really sit straight up. The roof has a little bit of a curve, so it's higher here. And I just measured, it's almost three feet, but it's still not enough space to sit straight up. So even the two feet didn't make it perfect. The loft is super cozy, and my nieces and nephews always wanted to be up here with me. They felt like it was a tree house. The windows are amazing and when I moved in, the sun would come up through this window so it would wake me up every morning and I would kind of scoot to see the mountain and the beautiful view over there. And it was really nice because I made these curtains with my mom on her sewing machine, which I'm not a sewer at all, but that was a fun project. And my dad and I made the shelves on either side. I was learning a lot of new skills, which was really fun. So this is the first thing that I ever bought for the tiny house. I got it while I was in Tulum, Mexico in anticipation of having my own spot to do my makeup. And I like it because guests can sit here and face this way and then I can also turn and do what I need to do over here. So this is the second loft right as you walk in the door. 
I just used this for storage, but I also had some family members install rings here. And I used to, when I lived here, hang my yoga trapeze and do that in here. It was my best friend Lindsay's idea to build pallet couches. So we just drove around and found these on the side of the street. My niece Shelby helped me pick out the cutest ones. And then uh, Lindsay and I built them, which was a lot harder than we thought it was gonna be because we're not builders, even though it looks like we just set three pallets on top of each other. A lot more went into it, um, but we did plan for some storage space which isn't being used right now, but we had two little baskets in there, so it was a lot of extra room. I've really liked it because it was free. I like how wide they are, so I can feel like I can really like cozy up. I just bought a thick pad and then these two blankets at Home Goods with the pillows, so the couch all together was probably like $60 or something, like really good deal, and I could make them the size that I wanted so they fit perfectly in here. When I have guests over, I just go over, push that one over here and it makes a guest bed. So one cool feature is hidden behind here is my table that my dad built for me. He came in very handy during everything. You can just do that. It comes down and that's where I would eat most of my meals. Living tiny for me is freedom. You can go anywhere at any time. You have the money that you haven't spent on all of these things that you don't really need. Someone once told me that the world is this huge place and you get this much to show your personality and make it beautiful and cozy for you. My advice for living tiny is go for it. Just jump into it because Thinking about it and questioning it, I feel like it's just gonna give you hesitation. And in my experience, it's not been hard. It's been amazing, so worth it. And it gives you other opportunities in life that you wouldn't have had. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's creative home tour. If you feel inspired to get your creative juices flowing, then I suggest that you check out Skillshare, who sponsored this week's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. For example, I already have a background in filmmaking, but after taking a few classes on Skillshare specifically about developing a YouTube channel, I've been able to hone in and make higher quality and more interesting content for you guys. But outside of my work life, I find that Skillshare is a really fun way to find a new hobby. After taking an indoor gardening class with Ekta Chantry, I learned what ornamental houseplants would be best for a small space with low to medium light. I finally understood why I keep killing all of my plants. And so far, it's working out pretty well. Don't be shy guys, say hello. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Well, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Skillshare can help make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and connection through creativity. It's time to invest in yourself and your personal growth. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description and code TinyHouseGiantJourney0522 will get a one free month trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks for watching this week's video. I will see you soon with another tiny house or creative home tour.